Hello, and welcome to another PWN Design Studio tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to go ahead and break down a way that you can create a hard top shelf and a smooth lower canyon area without having to use, um, you know, some other preset primitives and, and things like that. Usually you can use fault and get similar results, but this one gives you a little bit more control on what you can do. So to get started, we're using a multi-fractal. You can see the settings that I'm using here to create the fractal. I'm also using some post-process effects here, which is going to be Shaper. Um, I'm using quite a bit on the, um, on the rounded side of Shaper. And I'm also using a auto level and the influence is really low. And that's just to get to this point where we have a top area and a flat bottom. Additionally, after I added the multifractal and found the look that I liked, I went ahead and put a fold on it and I just applied it everywhere and changed the rift just so we get a little bit of stretching down here. And this is just to break up the, the flat cliff sides. That's all this is for. It's, it's not to do much more than that. Then went ahead and used a multi-fractal on it to break up those uh, cliff faces. And at this point, you can do whatever you want. You don't have to do what I did here. Um, you can add other effects, erosion, things like that. But I'm going to go ahead and continue going forward with what I've decided to continue with. I then did a stratify, and all this is based on this height node, which is selecting just the lower areas uh, of, the, of the canyon and not selecting the top areas. So if we go back here, you can see the top areas are right here. And in the mask, they're black, so they're not being selected. I'm using zero fall off. And I'm also normal, I normalize the mask. That way I get finer control over my selection. I stratified the lower areas that were um, that Fractal Terrace had used uh, or was applied to. I then used Aperture to expand those terraces. I did another fractal terrace to kind of just break it up a little bit more and it wasn't very much. And then I blurred it. And at this point you can see here it gives us a really cheap thermal erosion type look. And after that I was like, okay, well the, the top part is, you've got some details here but it's still smooth in some areas. So I just applied a noise to the top parts only. And that was based on this height. So that was super simple. Um, and it's a very cheap and cost-effective way of building out these canyon areas without having to do a whole lot of erosion. It's not uh, physically accurate to what you would find in nature, but that's okay. You might do this for like a more stylized game. Um, or maybe just some quick look deving if you wanted to uh, play around with this type of landscape. So the whole point of this was to get a flat top shelf and a canyon look. And this is something that you would find maybe around the Grand Canyon area or in southern Utah, and I thought that looked pretty good. It also gives you a good idea of how you can create really detailed flat terrain areas rather than just always having mountains or billows or things like that. So there's a couple things you can learn from following this approach. Now, you can apply this approach to pretty much anything, and um, I like multifractal because it gives us uh, quite a variation between two different types of fractals. Uh, or just, you know, multiple different looks in one node, and I like that. Sometimes you want a more stabilized look, so I went ahead and put in a worse lens. And this is what I found by default, which is what I liked. Now, if you guys have been following me for a long time, you know that my favorite way of making a detailed floor is just using a single worse lens node. But I usually set it to small, and then just crank up the scale to wherever I need it, and fiddle with the other options here until I find a look that I like. But this one was really cool because it gave me a slant in the landscape where there's this low elevation over here and then it kind of uh, has a gradient that goes upwards and this is all built into the node. And this gives us a really cool look when I apply it to the rest of these nodes. So this is with fold and I like fold just in general. It just gives us a really good look uh, on the landscape. And then the multifractal applied to that will give us our shelving and you can use this for a closer close-up shot of your landscape if you were down in the canyon. And then I just kept the same settings where I stratified that uh, lower portion. And this again, this is all based on this height. 
we can adjust the height so it's lower than that because it doesn't look like that it's really selecting extremely low areas. So we'll do maybe about 60% there. There we go. So if we go back to this fractal terrace and then back to this stratify, you can see it's stratifying this lower area. This aperture, again, all these are going to the same height. That fractal terrace again gives us some more shelves. And then this blur is slightly lower than the rest of the height selections for these um, other nodes. And that's so we get this sharp edge right here. And now that's blurred. And then you can add the noise to wherever you want. This noise can be applied to the whole landscape or it can be applied to just top areas, uh, bottom areas, so on and so forth. It just really depends on what you want to do. So we're going to apply it probably right here. Let's take a look. Yep, that's about where we want it. You can see the noise before, right there, and after. And it's just a small amount of noise. You can see here, it's not even 0.5. It's just slightly below that. And then you can add in some water if you wanted to. So you can have like a giant riverbed here. So we can do a lakes node. And we're going to want to do some flood control on this. Um, we can be a little more selective here because we've got a lot of landscape to work with, work with. But just for quick visualization purposes, we'll just do some flood control. That should help us adjust where the water level is a little bit better. And uh, in this case, it's so flat, it's not really going to do much. But you can see the point. You can put a river in here and you can have these flat, smooth riverbeds now. You can color those the way you need. Um, you can kind of just go from there. It's a super simple build. It doesn't take a whole lot of time to build out. They're very cheap nodes that we're using. And you can get some really cool fine results from them. And this is only building out at 1K. So you can see it's pretty detailed from the get-go. You get these really cool plateau uh, shelf areas from where the, the wind or the water was hitting the landscape. You can even blur this a little bit more. I'm using a Gaussian blur. But you can use just the, the fast blur and get a really smooth look like that. And you can have um, like sand. So let's go ahead and actually adjust this a little bit. Let's bring down the blur just so we bring in a little more detail, like maybe there, maybe, maybe there. There we go. <clears throat> and now we can pop in some sand. And we can do this based on the height as well. So let's go ahead and um, apply the mask for this right there. There we go. And let's combine these. There we are. And now we're going to want to use a probably a mask, a max style blend. And we'll just pump this up all the way. Maybe not. Um, hold on. Let's use this height for the mask, and we'll see what that does for us. I don't think we have enough value there for it to do anything, so we'll just play around with some other blend options. Probably add. There we go. Add looks to be pretty good in this case. There we go. And with that mask selection there, we're just adding it to that area. All right, now the sand's a little bit too large. Let's go ahead and increase the small, and we'll decrease the large structures. Actually, we might want to decrease the small as well, so they're just super tiny. That actually might make it more flat. Nope, that's all right. That'll look, that'll look all right. There we go. So now we got these sandy, more sandy areas, and they're kind of blowing in a certain direction. You can change the direction um, in here with the wind. So we could do, I can't remember which way wind A blows. I think they're in degrees as well. So if we want it to blow, if north is zero, maybe 90, then we want it to go west towards the cliffs maybe. So we want to go 180 or maybe 270 we'll find out let's change wind b there we go yeah about 
maybe 270 is probably where we're going to want to be. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, that looks a little better. Now they're kind of going towards the, the cliff face or away from it, whichever way you want to look at it. And that looks a little better. So there, the possibilities are pretty high. Um, there's a lot of things that you can do with this, um, this procedure. So what I would like to do is see what you guys come up with using this specific method. Uh, it's, I just made this through testing and also uh, in an, an attempt to create a tutorial that would show you guys how to make really flat but detailed floors. The nice thing is, is that there is a, um, what is it called? The, um, there is a, a startup that you can actually get that will show you how to make detailed floors. It might still be shipping with the new version of Gaia, but I think it's an older one. I can't remember. I don't really use the, the startup projects very much. But you can look at that one and see how that detailed floor was made. But essentially what that amounted to was worse lands, at least in my opinion, because the results were very similar. And you can just use worse lands for a very detailed floor. Like it doesn't take a lot to, to build it. It's a very fast and cheap node. And you can change the scaling. You don't have to use large. You can use small and you can get some good detailed floors that way. Anyways, I hope this video was instructive and informative. And I would really like to see what you guys come up with in the future. Um, look devving is really fun. We do have some preset look dev nodes that we can use, but um, at the end of the day, we have all these nodes that we can use to kind of create our own little structures. And I highly advise and recommend people to just throw nodes together and see what they do and just play around with it. If you guys have any questions or concerns, just let me know and I'll see you guys in the next one.